So the Congress won the war, and this opened up the door for new government. Policies go low, like the Articles of Confederation, the first constitution of the render nation. You know it caused much elation, so let it be known, it was a stepping stone for the American Constitution we all know, it paved the way for show. But in 1787, they all met in Philly, so they could fix all the things that were silly. Of all the states, only nine were willing, Rhode Island didn't show, and was just a chillin'. They formed a three-branch government, and only nine had to submit their will to sanction so now our constitution was legit. Now the constitution was missing the role of a leader. Who do you think would step up, take charge, and be there? The decisions they made were obviously clear. They chose a charismatic leader who showed no fear. Washington for president in 1789. Unanimously voted deserving a virtual high five. Point three departments together changed lives. With them, the United States had a pretty good time. Alexander Hamilton was the Tebow of commerce. He told Washington a national bank with that in a coin purse. But Thomas Jefferson argued and said that's absurd. Nevertheless, Washington concurred. All the banks were in doubt and everyone was glad. They got more money than before they'd ever had. So Hamilton was right as a matter of fact. Man circles round Tommy like a P.E. lap In 1794, a bunch of rednecks and pin Got riled up thinking whiskey taxing as a sin So Washington got the army, they were sure to win But a few got hurt or killed in the end But despite that, it was a sound victory Troops were proud and happy in Jubilee It was a good opportunity for the country to see the government deserve R.E.S.P.E.C.T. After the French Revolution, the fight escalated British and the French were still deeply hated, so Washington issued a neutrality proclamation. His main goal was to avoid confrontation. He sent John Jay to deal with the British. He made Jeffersonians get kind of skittish. He made him unlike when he was finished. To most, his treaty is viewed as a blemish. Washington resigned in 1796. There are still many things that need to be fixed. Many were wondering who would take his place. Then John Adams won the presidential race. Unlike Washington, he won by a slim margin. It doesn't matter now, cause a win is a win. He nearly beat out Thomas Jefferson. And he also fired Alexander Hamilton. In 1800, there was a new president. It was none other than Mr. Thomas Jefferson, who a small number of votes he narrowly won. He beat out John Adams and became number one. Through this election, he got his revenge. He wouldn't be able to stand losing again. In his victory, he had more than one win, because the Federals disappeared along with Adams. In 1803, Jefferson wanted New Orleans. It didn't matter how or what the means. Napoleon thought it was a waste of time personally, so he negotiated with them agreeably. Monroe and Livingston tried to make a deal. They bargained for a week with much skill. They bought Louisiana for 15 mil. That was pocket change, so they paid with bills. After two terms like Washington, Jefferson quit, but he supported this new candidate. His successor, James Madison, would be a perfect fit. He took the oath and became legit. He didn't dominate, but would hold his own. Madison would run the country for a show. How he would, nobody would know. Read the next chapter, find out, and let's go. <laughs>
seven more takes will do. <laughs> yeah. I, I did screw up on the first pop up, I think, because I was looking at the screen. He's as... AP. Hi, Brian. That's going in the credits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, serious. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. Messed up about 2,000 times. My ear's gonna die. There's a few right there. Don't make it mad like... Okay, what are we... Are we...